Hi, and welcome to the Social Distance Reading Series. It is a project of the Vermont School and Green Mountains Review. I am Angela Narciso Torres, author of Blood Orange, and most recently of a chapbook named To the Bone, which was published by Sundress Publications just this month, March 2020. And I'm happy to be joining you today from my little writing office or writing room in Delray Beach, Florida. And I'm also joined here by my furry puppy named Phoebe. Say hi, Phoebe. She's actually very sleepy right now. And um, I'm really excited to be part of this new reading series. Thank you so much to Elizabeth Powell and all the editors who invited me to be part of this project. Um, so aside from the two collections of poetry I mentioned, I also have a full-length collection coming out next year from Four Way Books called What Happens is Neither, and it will be out in March of 2021, and I'm very excited about that as well. I'm the current reviews editor at Rhino Poetry. Rhino Magazine has been in existence for over 40 years. It's out of Chicago, and I'm very fortunate to be able to continue working with them remotely here in Florida. Um, editing reviews that come out monthly on their website. Um, the poems I'm about to read are all or mostly from the, the new chapbook I mentioned, To the Bone. And um, the backdrop of this book is my mother's um, struggle with Alzheimer's disease and eventual decline and demise from it. Um, it is also a book about the essential condition of being human, which is change and loss and how the human spirit continues or strives to look for meaning in the midst of profound change and loss. Um, when my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very scary and confusing time for our family. And one of my responses was to record, to record her stories. She was a great storyteller. She was the life of our family, the, the center piece of our, our lives. She was a great cook. She was a very um, active physician in her field. She loved music, she played the piano. And so as she began to decline into dementia, I guess um, instinctively I began to just record um, the stories that she repeated, the food she loved, the songs she played on the piano, her rituals. And a lot of them made, in, made their way into this book. And in fact, into this first poem, which I'm about to read. It's called Sundowning, and it's for my mother, Carmen. Sundowning. The sweetest meat clings to the bone, my mother says, knifing her steak. Carmen, silver spade on my tongue. Mahjong nights, her mother and father gone, she cried herself to sleep. Blamed in the morning for her mother's losing hand, unlucky tears. The sweetest meat she begins at dinner, tearing off a chicken leg. What will she recall by morning? Named for Our Lady of Mount Carmel, she pinned brown scapulars under our shirts, wet stamps that cleaved to our skin. Carmen, prayer on the breath. Amid potted ferns, she works a jigsaw puzzle. Bizet on the radio. Unable to sleep, she made me lie next to her. My brothers clambered the moonlit trees. My legs twitched, a broken clock. Her kisses are guava and rust. She sings kundimans her mother sang. Sampagita, dahil sayo, saan kaman. Sunday morning, puzzle pieces strewn on yesterday's news. Maria Callas on the phonograph. Carmen, citrine fire. When she plays the piano, the lovebirds fall silent. Alabaster eggs tremble in glass bowls. Afternoons, she woke with an urge to bite the brown loaf of my arm. The marks on my flesh faded by sundown. The sweetest meat clings, she insists peels a mango, amber rivers tracing her elbows. A trail of l'air du temps wafts in her wake, 
I follow it to her room, dab the scent on my wrists and throat. Evenings, she sang Kundimans, Hatingabi, Nasaanka Irog, Carmen, Song of the Mangosteen Moon. Before you go, I want to give you something. She hands me a thimble painted with a map of Cuba. We've never been to Cuba. In the dream, a sister pours rosary beads into her cupped hands. Upon waking, a dead wasp curled in her palm. This next poem is about the superstitions I was raised with as a child <clears throat> and the other world beyond that which we know. These were beliefs that my, my parents, my mother particularly, and her family held, and they became part of our family lore. And it opened up this whole other world, of a whole other system of logic and mythology that occupied my imagination and sometimes even my nightmares. It's called, If You Go to Bed Hungry. If you go to bed hungry, your soul will get up and steal cold rice from the pot. If you play with fire before the moon rises, you'll pee in your sleep. Sweeping the floor after dark sweeps wealth and fortune out the door. Fork dropped, a gentleman will visit. Spoon, a bashful lady. Bathing after you've cooked over a hot stove makes the veins swell. For safe passage to the guest who leaves mid-meal, turn your plate. The adage goes, coffee stunts growth. Twelve grapes on New Year's, the opposite. Advice from the learned, keep a book under your pillow. Never step on, never drop. Every rice grain that remains on your plate, you'll meet again on the footpath to heaven. You'll have to stoop to pick up each one. So for this next poem, I'd like to take a break from the poems in the chapbook and read a poem that I wrote as really a love poem, but it's disguised as a dog poem. And, I'm, and this is for Phoebe. It's a dog poem and also a love poem. It's called Amores Perros, and it's, the title is borrowed from a Spanish movie by the same title. Amores Perros. Sometimes I love you the way my dog loves her all beef chew bone, worrying the knuckled corners from every angle, mandibles working like pistons. Her eyes glaze over with a faraway look that says she won't quit until she reaches the soft marrow. Her paws prop the bone upright, it slips. She can't clutch it tight enough, bite hard enough. A dog's paws weren't meant for gripping. And sometimes I love you the way my dog brushes her flank nonchalant against my legs, then flops on the floor beside me while I read or watch TV. Her heft warms. One of us is hungry. The other needs to pee. But we sit, content as wildflowers. Minutes pass, hours. Um, this next poem is actually the last poem in the chapbook, um, and it's also the title of the full-length book that's coming out from Four Way Books in uh, March of next year. I wrote this at least two years before the death of both my parents last spring, not knowing how much it would resonate today. Um, the title is What Happens Is Neither. It's also the title of my forthcoming um, full-length collection. And um, it's also 
part of the first line of the poem, so when I read it, the title will just bleed into the first line. <clears throat> what happens is neither the end nor the beginning. Yet we're wired to look for signs. Consider the peonies. One makes a perfect bud after months of nothing. Another's leaves are ringed with black rot. How can I not think end? How can I not say beginning? Leaves fall when days shorten because a tree must reduce to its tough parts, twig, branch, bark. My mother sleeps away the daylight. She nods off while chewing a spoonful of fish and rice, her head a peony gone to seed. My father calls to say she doesn't recognize him. Turning to him, she cried out, certain a stranger was in her bed. He played his violin until she slept, a leaf in late fall, curling into itself. In autumn, chlorophyll disappears, canceling green from leaves so yellow and magenta can blaze. In my mirror, I see her, the smile that favors a cheek, eyes slanting in the shape of small fish we eat for breakfast. Trees know best the now of things. What goes on has been going on for centuries. Washing dishes, I rest a foot on my standing leg. A fork clangs onto the tile. I rinse a cracked cup. I try not to think of endings. I'd like to end this reading with a self-portrait poem this chapbook has three self-portraits, and this is the third of three that appear in this book. It's called Self-Portrait as Revision. I am the storm-torn palm frond draped on the balcony wall. I am the cumin in the soup stirring the lentils sleep. I am the olive skeletal pit, the cat's paw, the thistle spear, the clay in the kiln cast into a small flask to hold centuries of musk. For weeks I do not sing, though I gush, an underground rill carving blindly to the sea. I succumb to thunder, the urch urchins sting, the softness of moss. This is my prayer. I am driftwood, parched in white heat, soaked in January rain a seashell pressed to its pale grave. The wind rises, rewriting the hymnals of dunes. I am hurricaned, worn smooth again. So thank you again for joining me and for listening. If you like what you heard and would like to read more of these poems into the bone, you can go to Sundress Publications um, I think it's sundresspublications.com, their website, and you can download a free PDF of the poems. But if you're old school like me and would like a print copy, or better yet, a print signed copy from me, you can get this from me at angelatorrespoet.bigcartel.com. That's Angela Torres Poet, one word, dot big cartel, B I G C A R T E L dot com. And um, proceeds of the sales will go to Rices, which, as you know, provides legal services for free or at low cost to re refugees, immigrants, and their families. So you not only get a book of poems signed by me, but you will also be contributing to a very worthy cause. Again, thanks for watching. Take care, keep writing, stay safe, and don't forget to wash your hands. Bye.